Welcome back to the channel. My name is Brandon. Today we are going to pull the Subaru out of the garage. We're going to have to make some room because the big old Tundra needs to come in. Well, at least half of it because the front brakes need to be redone. Pads and rotors I'm going to be replacing because the front jitter is so bad. Every time I apply the brakes, the whole front of the truck shakes. I looked at the service records. It doesn't look like they were done too long ago, but probably at a Toyota dealership they probably just turned the rotors and slapped on pads and off it went. So let me show you the pads and rotors that we're going to put on today. These are heavy. These are StopTech Sport Slotted Rotor Non-Cryo Treated. So they're not the cryogenic expensive hardened rotors. Um, they are slotted left and right. So SL in the part number is left, slotted left. SR in the part number is slotted right. Make sure you put those on the right way. And for the pads, we are going to be doing Hawk LTS. Now this is supposed to be a very good performance-ish brake pad for the Tundra. And the reason I went with these slotted rotors is because I do like the way that they are slotted. Um, it keeps gases from building up and it also keeps the pads nice and clean. I did not want to go with the cryo treated. Now, the reason I didn't want to go with the cryo treated rotors is because what they do is they freeze them and heat them up so that they become a very, very hard metal. And the original rotors on the Tundra are very hard rotor. They last for a very long time, but I think that is at the expense of performance. From what I've learned is when a pad and a rotor kind of wear out a little more quickly or they're a little more soft, they're actually creating better performance because they're biting and they're actually being used rather than a rotor that's super hard and the pad is just kind of skimming across the surface of it. That's a tight fit. I think we are gonna put the little Craftsman two-ton jack through its paces today, but we're just gonna do one corner at a time. Gotta take that wheel off first, but I gotta get this corner up in the air. Safety first. That is all she wrote, and that's not enough. But first, we're gonna crack the lug nuts loose while it's still on the ground because that tire is just gonna spin when it's up in the air. So I have some super thick stout wood. I'm gonna put it into the frame and see if I can get the clearance that way for the jack to lift the tire off the ground. Okay. It's on two jack stands and the wheels underneath it. Most of the weight is off of the jack, but I'm just gonna leave it there for an extra catch point. Okay, so if we were going to just do pads, it's actually pretty easy the way these calipers is designed. There's a little clip here. See a little metal retaining clip? Those just slide out. Then there's two pins here, top, bottom. Those just slide out. And then the pads just slide right out. Then you can put in new pads, but then the rotors won't be resurfaced. I don't like doing that pad slap, so we're gonna do, do it all. And on the back here, you can see where the bolts are for the top one here for the caliper. And then there's another one down there. And that will actually undo the entire caliper so that we can get the rotor off. But before undoing the caliper, we have a hard line that comes out of the caliper and into where the spindle is and then up to the brake soft lines. I'm gonna undo this, looks like a 12 mil here, and this whole bracket should come loose. You don't wanna be prying on the caliper when that hard line's going into it because you're just gonna bend it. My mistake, there's actually two of these little retaining clips. This one goes on the bottom and then this one goes on the back here that slides in, holds these pins in place. Once these are both removed, the pins come out. They slide out if you're lucky enough not to live in a 
corrosive environment. And then you might have to suppress the pistons a little bit with a screwdriver um, or a special tool to open these up because sometimes they might not slide out. Also, I'm gonna loosen the cap on my master cylinder just so the fluid has a little bit of extra uh, room to go, but make sure you don't do it too much so it doesn't overflow. Just enough to get the pads loose and you can always suppress them a little bit further if you need more clearance for the new pads and rotors. Just like that. You can see there is a pretty good amount of meat left on these still. Maybe with those shims they might be OEM. It's real unfortunate that I can't find my impact gun. So I'm gonna have to break these two big boys back here myself. 17 mil, breaker bar. Watch these lines back here. Give it a tug. Not too tight, it's nice. Someone may have actually taken care when putting these on the first place. Bottom one, same thing. Up, tug, not bad at all. Now, these aren't the smallest calipers in the world. Um, they might be a little heavy, so I like to have a bungee cord already wrapped up, ready to go to grab it when it comes off. And I got my wife's favorite turkey basting pan down below to catch all the dirt and crust and crumb grime coming out of it. Be careful, there is, it's like a speed sensor over here on this side. It's like a 10 mil to separate the speed sensor line. ABS sensor line from the actual brake line. 10 mil up here to undo those two. Now they're free to kind of move about separately. Okay, separate those two. Oh, might want to rotate it up. Don't scratch the paint on your upper control arms. This is way harder than it has to be. I must be working on it. Time to remove the rotor. Hmm. Yeah, there is a little hole here if you need to press out the rotor, but since we're not gonna reuse it, we're gonna hit it with a hammer. <laughs> that might be overkill. We'll see. Clean this up. Little wire wheel. Just a little brake clean to get the uh, shipping oils off of the face. These don't seem to be too bad, but sometimes you'll get a rotor that's just covered in oil inside the packaging and you want to clean both of those sides of the rotors off before you put those brand new pads on. Watch your fingers. Put a lug nut in place to kind of hold it on there so it's not flopping around when you're trying to mount the Caliper. See that? Nice and sturdy. Don't force anything. Check your factory service manual for proper torque specs. Not only is it supposed to be like that, but you're actually saving yourself or the next person a lot of headache when they go to do this job. Looking at the pads and rotors, looks like it was a Toyota job, and you can tell. These things aren't blasting off with impact guns, they weren't impossible to get off. A little extra effort goes a long way. If not now, maybe later. I already cleaned out the, um, the sliding pin area with the wire brush a little bit and we're going to clean up the pins and little brake clean 
and the hawk pads did come with some grease and we want to put the put that grease in the proper spot so we don't get a squeak the hawk lts pads appear to have the same part number on all four of them so what we're going to do is we're going to run a little bit of their it's like a molly coat or some kind of um, a brake lube on both sides of it and then also i'm going to put some on the face of the pistons so that or you know just you can just do a light coat on the back of this uh shim here but they come with shims i'm going to save the factory ones because they're expensive and they seem to be in pretty good shape still um i know from working in a car dealership that sometimes these shims actually end up costing more than the pads which is crazy but i'm going to hang on to those for now and this is looks like a Advix looks like it's OEM pad and actually oh yeah it has the Toyota number or Toyota stamped right on there. I know Advix A D V I C S makes a lot of OEM pads. And there's the difference thicknesses OEM pad on the bottom, the LTS Hawk pad on top. And I don't know maybe halfway through, maybe a little less. But like I said the shutter is enough for me to want to change these. Take a little extra care and don't get anything on the surface of the pad or the rotor. Let's do a little bit there. Both sides. And I'm also going to put a little bit of this on the slide pin. Rinse and repeat to the other pad. Gotta get the angle right. There we go. Both slide pins lubed up. And you go in. It's actually pretty easy. A little too far. Boop. Okay, and upper one is same. And I've never done this job, but maybe an hour or so in the garage. Save yourself a couple hundred dollars. The first one is always longer because you're learning as you go. The second one will go about twice as fast. Go and clip this back in. Okay, torque the top, torque the bottom. All these are nice and secure. Just like we started. Look at that. We have to put the bottom clip in before we can do the outer one. Let's see. And then this goes through all of it to keep it in place. And we don't remember, don't forget to put this one back as well. Ta da! That one's there. No rattling. Good. Forgot to mention you could also do a little, a little bead of uh, anti-seize or some high copper brake um, lube in and around where the rotor hits the actual spindle just so it's a little easier to take off next time. Oh. Now, you could rotate your tires, but I cannot remove both wheels at the same time. And I don't have enough time, so it's not gonna happen. We'll let the professionals do that. Good thing I canceled my gym membership. I'll lower it a little bit. And we can torque it. Good as new, if not better. Look at that. One thing that I really would have liked to do in addition to the pads and rotors to really give it a performance upgrade would be to go stainless steel lines and then to bleed the entire system with new brake fluid. I don't have the time to do it today. I might come back and do it later. Um, but right now, the tools, time permitting, I'm just gonna do the pads and rotors on the front.
Notable mention is to bed in the brakes properly according to the brake pad. After installing brake pads, make six to 10 brake engagements from approximately 30 to 35 miles an hour, apply moderate pressure without coming to a complete stop. Immediately followed by two to three more brake engagements from 40 to 45 miles an hour with hard pedal pressure without coming to a complete stop. Do not drag brakes. About 15 minutes for the brake system to cool down. So make sure you bed in your brakes properly according to the brake pad. Well, just like that, side number one is done. The second side should go a little smoother because, well, I figured out how to do it. I'm gonna watch the brake fluid amount on the reservoir, add some if needed. This is a really big truck. You don't realize how big something is until you wash it or try to put it in your garage. Thanks for watching. See you next time.